Hello everybody, welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be doing a repot and I'm also going to be answering some of your questions that I asked for I think about three weeks ago now. I planned to film this before I moved and then I just ran out of time so I'm filming it today. Um, hope that's okay with you. I love just having a little Q&A moment every once in a while, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I have your questions pulled up over here. I have the plants ready. Actually, no, I don't. I'm missing, I'm missing one thing, just a sec. I do also have a nice candle burning to set the vibes, but it doesn't look very vibey because the flame is literally so small. You can't see it, but it is here. Setting, setting the mood for a cozy repot. It's a bit of a cloudy, rainy day today, so that's why I wanted to have something a little cozy happening, you know? Okay, I think I have everything now, so I'm gonna be talking about what plants we are going to be working with. First of all, we have my Alocasia Black Velvet. If you are familiar, I have struggled with this plant for probably three years now. This is actually grown from a corm, which came from the original mother plant, which I don't have anymore because it just would not grow more than one leaf. It would maybe have two, but then it would start losing one pretty quickly. So yeah, I don't know why I found this to be so difficult. I have a fairly easy time with dragon scale and honestly, most alocasia, I feel like I'm kind of figuring out, but this one I just never cracked the code on. So we're kind of starting over with this new little corm and so far so good. We have two healthy leaves on there, which is great. And I have heard that these do really well in self watering. And specifically I heard Darylin from Plant Friend down the street say that she has her, I think it was her, oh my goodness, I hope I'm not making that up. I'm fairly certain that she has said that, that she has her alocasia black velvet in self-watering but with soil and i've done that before with um i did like an experiment with these self-watering pots that i ordered from amazon probably two years ago now i did that and i was actually really surprised at how well the plants in soil did in self-watering because i thought you know there would be raw issues happening but there wasn't so i feel comfortable going ahead and doing self-watering in soil for this one and hopefully that will be the key to this thing being happy and growing. I'm gonna be using this adorable little self-watering pot from Crystal Star Nursery. It's just like a little cube and it has a water gauge, which I love, and then just a net pot in there. Um, and yeah, it's really cute. I've never used this specific self-watering pot before, so I'm really excited to try that. And I'm gonna be putting it in my Crystal Star Tropical Mix. Again, I used that in my last video. Like I said, I love it. Um, and I think that the combination of having a really chunky mix with a self-watering pot is going to do me well. So fingers crossed for that. But anyways, yeah, that's the first thing. And then secondly, we are going to be repotting my Hoya Quinquinervia. I've been meaning to repot this for quite some time just because it dries out so so quickly and now this is sitting in a south facing window so it's just i'm not going to be able to keep up with it i think that it does like being fairly root bound because it's just been in this tiny this is like a three maybe three and a half inch terracotta planter and it's been super happy in here honestly but i just know i'm not going to be able to keep up with the watering because i was barely keeping up with it before by the way look at how good this is looking like oh my candle just went out okay yeah, look at this plant. He is looking amazing. I love it so much. You know, I didn't appreciate this plant so much when I first got it, but now that I've been growing it for a while, it's just so beautiful and so easy going. And it really is just one of my favorite Hoya now. So yeah, I love that. It gets beautiful sun stressing as well. So hopefully in the south facing window, I'll be able to see some of that this summer. Um, but yeah, just a great Hoya. I'm just going to be upgrading it, not a huge, upgrade but oops but we're gonna be upgrading to this four maybe four and a half i don't know it's about one pot size bigger but it's also plastic so it's going to be retaining more water so i think that you know just a small size jump and changing the type of pot is going to be enough to retain retain a little bit more water for this guy so i'm really excited to do that 
And then lastly, I'm really excited about this. This is my Discoria Discolor, which I thought was gonna croak on me because I almost killed it after it arrived to me as this beautiful cutting with these cute two leaves down here. Like the biggest leaves were the original leaves. Charmaine actually sent this to me, which was so nice of her. And I'm honestly in love with this and I can't wait to see it grow grows like a weed they're known for just growing like insanely fast the backs are purple like the color is just so gorgeous this is from the yam family and it's really like viney and wants to climb it's also shooting out so many new growth points like all around oh my goodness it's just crazy anyways this has been propagating in perlite and it has quite a bit of roots they look fairly fine but they look really healthy so I'm gonna be transferring this to soil today. I'm also going to be giving it a trellis. This is a new trellis from North Shore Tropicals. I haven't taken it out of the plastic yet. Maybe we'll do that when we're gonna go ahead and plant, but this is a fairly large plas clear plastic trellis, which I think is gonna be perfect because I don't want something that's too small, but I love that it's clear. I think that it's gonna look really good. And then I'm gonna be using this pot. I thought that the pink, pink and pink, it's like honestly almost the same color. Um, I thought that that would be cute, but it's just a cover pot. I can change it out. We're going to be potting directly into this yogurt container again. I save all my yogurt containers now because they always just like happen to fit perfectly with some of my cover pots. So yeah, we're going to be using this. By the way, this yogurt is literally so good. I don't know where it's all sold. It's made here in BC, but honestly, it's my favorite. It's delicious. Side note, I need to poke some holes in the bottom too. But yeah, this plant is just gorgeous. I want to give you a little close up of what the leaves look like. Look at that. I'll talk about it more, like how it's been doing and everything um, when I'm working with it. Actually, will I? Because I'm going to be answering questions. Maybe I'll just mention it now. I transitioned this. I didn't really transition, to be honest. I just kind of took it out of the cabinet. It was in the Millsbow Wide. Okay, let's rewind. So I received this as a cutting, promptly went downhill. I think it was rooting. I can't remember if it was water. I think I was trying to root it in water for a while and that just wasn't cutting it. It was just shriveling up. I'm honestly shocked that the original leaves bounced back and are still on here. Very resilient plant, I can definitely say that. But anyways, water wasn't cutting it. I decided to pop it in perlite. Of course, that worked like a charm. I love propagating in perlite. Whenever I'm just like really trying to save something, I put it in perlite. And then um, it didn't have any of this vining growth. So I was able to just put it in a Ziploc bag and that creates a little humidity dome. So I did that and I was shocked when it started coming back to life. I honestly thought I was gonna lose this plant and I was super bummed about it. It started coming back to life. So then eventually once it started pu pushing out some new growth and everything, I took it out of the Ziploc bag. So from the Ziploc bag, it transitioned to the, um, just being in the Ikea greenhouse cabinet. So humidity was still boosted. It was getting a lot of light, you know, living that bougie life. And then um, after it was in the cabinet for a while, like probably a couple of months, was it a couple of months? I think I got this in March, April, May. Yeah, it would have been in there for a couple of months. Actually, it was probably in like the Ziploc for like six weeks and then maybe the cabinet for like six weeks. I'd have to fact check my timeline, but I feel like that's like kind of accurate. Um, so from the cabinet, I transitioned to just regular room humidity, having it in my house and it's done super well. It's obviously gone through the move and everything since then and it's doing amazing. So I feel very confident in repotting it today and just kind of focusing on growing it out and learning more about it because I still just don't know a lot about the needs, like what I can do for this plant to really make it thrive. I've just kind of been keeping it alive up until this point, you know? So if anyone has any tips on this one specifically, I would absolutely love to hear them. Um, I need to watch some videos on this and kind of learn some more, but yeah, it's been doing really well. And I just honestly still surprised that it it is doing so well and that it is alive at all. So that's great. Okay, so I'm just gonna get cracking with the repotting here. Repotting, repotting, and start answering your questions. Thank you so much to everyone who left them. I'm answering the ones that are on my community tab right now. Okay, first question. What is the one thing you did that made your El Choco so ethereal? First of all, well, thank you very much for the compliment. Second of all, I feel like my El Choco is not 
that ethereal like it really doesn't look that amazing it has one leaf that doesn't have crisping the big main leaf that i tend to show off of course is probably what makes it look so good but the rest of the plant doesn't look amazing and i think that that's from underwatering so i'm gonna say that my one tip for that plant is to not let it go past being bone dry for like if it reaches bone dry water it immediately don't fall behind on watering like I tend to because I genuinely feel like that's where the crisping has come from. I feel like if I can keep up with watering, I can get the plant to look really good. So I'm trying really hard to do that. And the second thing that I feel like has really helped my El Choco grow, I will say I'm really impressed with the leaf size on my El Choco. Um, so, and I think that that is attributed to the moss pole. And I know not everyone grows their El Choco on a moss pole, but I really recommend it just because I've had pretty good success with it growing on a pole. And also don't, I keep looking over here because it's over here, but also don't give it too much light because I see other people's that get really like bleached looking and the leaves are really light. And that's because they're just blasting them with grow lights. Mine does fine in just kind of ambient lighting or like just a medium indirect light. I don't like giving it too much direct sun or anything like that because I really want to maintain that dark velvety looking leaf. Like I'm really happy with the, the tone of green that mine is, if you will. So yeah, I guess those are going to be my three tips. I don't know. I kind of want to reuse this. Maybe I'll reuse it for a different plant. Maybe for the Hoya because I kind of want just the chunky mix for my black velvet, like I was saying. I was thinking of reusing that, but I'll use it for my other plants. Okay, let's bust out the crystal star. How do you keep track of what you do when with your plants? Uh, this, is, this is a good question because I do a really poor job of keeping track and I, okay, in a perfect world, I would keep up with the plant app. I love the plant app. I love being able to document photos and dates of, and like written notes on what I've done with my plants when and being able to look back on that. I really love that and I try to, but I'm just not consistent with updating it. I have so many plants. Some of them I do update more than others, but yeah, it's just my goal is to be better with that because I, I just love documenting it. It's kind of like a little plant journal, a little online plant photo journal. I see some people do spreadsheets and things, which I love that idea as well, but I'm just really bad at being consistent with things. So I, I don't really have a method that I stick with. I just kind of make, I mean, I do plant chore lists for my to do's. I write things down, but other than that, I just kind of walk around and I keep mental notes and just, just do it that way. If anybody out there has a large houseplant collection and you have found a method to document your plants and actually stay consistent and keep up with it, please leave a comment because I would love to hear from you. I think that that is very impressive and I want to know, I want to know your ways. Okay, next question just says Millsbo cabinet. Now, what to update about my Millsbo cabinet? They're both, they're both put back together. I think I'm gonna be moving, the wide is there kind of beside the tall, but I think I'm gonna be moving that once we get our living room area kind of set up a little bit more. But the cabinets have been doing really well. Like all of the plants in there are pretty happy. I really need to fix the grid, especially in the tall, it keeps slipping down. And I think that's because I just use suction cups to hold it up. And I think that they need to be cleaned because I think they got just like dirty and dusty after moving and then i just threw them back up and um they just keep slipping down like one of the shelves is completely fallen right now so i need to do that i'm also considering using something else to hold the wire up because they do slip sometimes and it is kind of annoying but i like that i can it's not permanent like it's not like 3m or you know anything that is going to really adhere to the glass and be difficult to move later I like that I can just switch it up so easily with the suction cups, so I don't know. I might just clean them because they were working pretty well before. But I also am considering just like exploring a different way to hang the wire grid. Other than that, the cabinets are doing really well though. The humidity in this one is like 93%. It's staying so high. The humidity in this house in general right now is pretty high. Right now it's like 
65% in here. So yeah, the plants are very happy with that. Next question is MCU or DC? Literally no idea. I, I think that MCU is like the Marvel universe and then DC, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I don't even know like which is from which. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I'll say Marvel, I don't know. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter for sure. Although I do not stand JK Rowling. Um, trailing or climbing plants? I'm going to have to say trailing. That's kind of hard because I love my climbers so much, but trailing plants have had my heart since the beginning. They're also easier care. They really just like give the jungle vibes. So I have to go with trailing. What am I looking for? My sprayer, where is it? <laughs> Next question is, <clears throat> what is your human design type slash profile? Now I love doing these little like personality test things. I know that there's a lot of different ones, but I've never done this one, this human design one. Should I do it and let y'all know what the answer is? Because I like filling them out and I'm always curious to know too. So maybe if I do it, I'll update but right now I have no idea. Next question is talk about your crystals. And I kind of get this one a lot, people asking questions about my crystals or asking me to even like make a video about them. And to be honest with you, I, I don't really know too much about them anymore. I went through like kind of like a crystal phase. I don't like saying phase, but it kind of was where I was buying a lot of crystals and really into them and like reading about them and learning about them. And all the crystals right now are basically from that kind of era and I still really love them and I think that they're beautiful and I love having them around my plants and in my home. But do I really know that much about them? Like I probably have forgotten a lot of their names and just to me, they're just kind of beautiful decor now. And I love that they just kind of like can complement the earthy kind of atmosphere in here, you know? I think that crystals are really cool and beautiful, but I feel like I don't really have too much to say about them beyond that. If you have any specific questions about a crystal that you see in one of my videos or one of my plants or anything, let me know. But for now, I just, that's kind of the story about my crystals. And here's my black velvet. So this potting mix, if you missed my last video, this potting mix, the directions are to mist it when you pot up and then to resume your regular watering after 24 hours. So I'm gonna leave it like this, just kind of damp and misted. And then tomorrow I'm going to fill this up until, until the water gauge is at the top. Number five is the top on this. And then I'll just water once it goes down to below the one, I guess that's going to be, that's going to be the new routine for this plant. But it looks really cute in this little cube. I actually really love it and the beautiful chunky potting mix, it should be really happy in there. So yeah, first one done. So cute. Maybe I'll put it right here. Any tips about starting a YouTube slash Instagram channel slash profile planty content? I actually, in a previous Q&A, uh, talked more in depth about this and and gave my thoughts on it and talked about, I'm pretty sure I even talked about like what equipment I use and everything and just kind of like how my best tips on how to get started. So I'll link that video down below in the description box. I feel like I got really lucky with my channel because I kind of started getting into plants and posting about plants in 2019, which was right before they really just like popped off in popularity. So I feel like for me, luck played into it a little bit that my channel has been like somewhat successful. I mean, to me, it feels very successful, but I know it's still like a small channel in the realm of YouTube. Um, <clears throat> so I don't really know how much advice. I feel like there's so many things I could improve upon and um, that I do think about all the time that I like would like to improve upon when it comes to my content and my reach and everything like that. So I feel like I'm not the best person to give tips. Like so many people out there are, in my opinion, like putting out better content than I am. But I have obviously put in like a lot of time and research and I've been doing social media for a long time before I even posted, started posting. I need to lift the camera up. I feel like it's just a little bit, is it too low? It's hard to tell. I think it's good actually. But anyways, like I said, I go more into depth um, 
in a previous Q&A, so go watch that video. I will have it linked. The roots look really good on this, really nice and healthy. They're really webbed through here and they're quite fine because Hoya roots tend to be quite fine, but this is all being held together, so I know that there's a lot of roots in there. I don't even think you're really gonna be able to see much of them, but yeah, they're looking great. I'm gonna put them back down and we are going into this plastic pot so i'll swap this out and then like i said i was going to reuse some of this so put that in and the next question how to grow monkey tail cactus and propagate it i also have a video specifically on that where i propagate my monkey tail cactus um so i will link that down below as well in the description box so go check that out because that has you know all of the all of the info i'm gonna be repotting my monkey tail soon i bought a new hanging basket for it it's living outside now for the summer which is really exciting but i bought a hanging basket for it so that i can hang it on the deck so pretty soon we will be repotting that guy and i'm really excited about it he gets so rooty in his pot it's just crazy i was shocked in the video that i'm talking about where i propagated him i like couldn't believe how much how much roots there was how many roots there were where is the philodendron campus sportuanum? I haven't seen it again. Oh my goodness, it is here, it is here. Let me show you. Do not fret, I still have it. It's just cuttings. I don't have the big plant anymore, but I do have cuttings that I'm gonna be repotting soon. Honestly, if I was thinking, I would have repotted this in this video because it's ready to be repotted. But I need to do a poll and everything for it, so I don't think I'm gonna do it right now. I have more cuttings too in a different jar. I think I have four cuttings of that plant right now that I'm gonna be potting together and um, giving probably either Rousseau pole or a thickly pole, I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, I am gonna be restarting that plant. I used to have a really full big moss pole of Campos Fortuanum. There was literally so many vines and growth points on that thing. I ended up selling it just because I felt like it wasn't really bringing me a ton of joy just having like such a big bushy plant. Like I really just want to grow a few vines and be able to appreciate all the leaves. I felt like I wasn't appreciating it enough. I was always forgetting to water it and it just wasn't like the style that I wanted to grow it in, I guess. So I took some cuttings, sold the mother plant, and now I'm going to be taking a different route with it. So I'm excited to pot that one up. Thank you for the reminder. Your favorite meals to make. I do, a, I share a lot about um, what I'm cooking, what I'm eating, grocery hauls and things like that on my vlog channel. So if you're interested in more of that type of like lifestyle kind of content, um, check out my vlog channel. As for a few of my favorite meals off the top of my head, any like tofu veggie rice bowl i love there's this recipe for this garlicky tofu that i'm obsessed with i love making that and then pairing it with some broccoli and putting it over some basmati rice it's just absolutely delicious i also love any type of kale salad kale caesar salad is what i've made this week and it was absolutely delicious also tacos i love a good taco and they're just like a very simple weekday meal quick weekday meal to make too. I love food. I love so many things. Also pasta, like spaghetti. Oh my goodness. I love making a good spaghetti with the guardian meatballs. Oh my God, delicious. Okay, I can already tell there's a lot more space in here for this plant, which is really good. And I think this soil mix, which is just a little bit more dense, is going to be appreciated by him. I mean, it's still chunky. Don't get me wrong, it's still chunky because I know, I know he needs that, but it's just a little bit more dense. What's your favorite flower to smell? I love this question so much and I'm sad that I don't have an answer. I actually don't know what my favorite flower to smell is. What would it be? I know what some of my favorite flowers are. I love sunflowers and peonies and ranunculus. I think ranunculus is like the most beautiful flower ever. I love them so much. If Olive. If I could grow ranunculus, I would be so happy. Maybe one day. Oh, shoot. It's my mother. I know that didn't answer the smell question, but those are some of my favorite flowers. I love anything that's like really just like ruffly and has lots of petals clustered and yeah, I think that's so pretty. Um, 
Maybe an update on your alocasias. I can definitely do that soon. Also someone else asking about alocasias, some info about how to care for alocasia corn step by step. I just root mine in perlite with a little dome over it to keep the humidity in and pop it in bright light. And it works really well for me. And I wish that I had more experience to kind of troubleshoot, um, but that's just, it works best for me. It works better than sphagnum. That's just the way that I have had luck. Somebody asked, what's the hardest thing about keeping chickens? And I do not know. I could not tell you because I have never kept a chicken before. Okay, how do you manage having lots of plants in a small space? I live in a college dorm and we aren't allowed to hang things from the ceilings or put large holes in the walls. I feel for you because I wanted to hang things from the ceiling so badly in my last place, but I couldn't because I didn't want to drill a bunch of holes into the ceiling. I kind of, my whole history of renting, except for my last place, I did not drill a single hole into the wall or anything. Um, and then when it came to living in my last place, I was just kind of like sick of, sick of that. So that's why I ended up hanging like my Wally grows and everything that I had to drill into the wall for and mounting my TV, um, which I did a horrible job of patching up when I moved out. Thank goodness my landlords were so nice about it, but it was, it was really bad, you guys. I was stressed. I was like in my Discord chat, like, help, does anyone have any ideas? Because this is just like very unwell. Anyways, that was a side tangent. I feel like the best even though you can't hang things or put things on the wall, I feel like there's still other ways to utilize vertical space. Whether that's through shelves, you could put tall shelves and like clamp grow lights on it. Also just growing plants up vertically on moss poles or stakes, trellises, things like that. When you are working with a small area, the footprint of a plant really matters. So if you can grow upwards rather than have plants that are growing out, uh, it, saves, it saves a lot of room, which is really nice. I have seen people use command strips on the ceiling to hang plants and I did that in my last place but I just hung very very light plants like just my tiny string of hearts and things like that I would hang from there because I did not want that busting down and like pulling all the paint off from the ceiling but I know that there are people who have hacks like that that they've done and that have worked well for them so I don't know how how risky you're feeling in trying out like any of those types of hacks also, Holly left a comment here that says garment racks are really good to hang plants and that's a great idea. I've seen a lot of people do that and it actually looks really cool too. If you buy a garment rack with like the bar that goes across, you can pop it in front of a window and um, have your hanging plants in like baskets and things hanging out on that. It is really difficult trying to have plants in a small space though and especially when you can't make holes or anything that's just that's frustrating i was getting so fed up with my setup in my last place before i moved because it was just so crowded plants were just kind of everywhere and if i didn't move i really would have had to downsize soon and i think i still am going to be downsizing a little bit i got rid of a couple plants yesterday so i'm all i'm like kind of downsizing because this is still a small space that i'm in it's a small house it's definitely more room than I had before, but there's not like, there's not a ton of space, you know? Plans for outdoor gardening this year. Okay, so my plans kind of got skewed a little bit. I don't know why I'm taking like five years just to push the soil into here, but I think this guy is done now. So do I have a cover pot for this? I guess I don't. I guess I do not. I'll have to get a cover pot for this. It's just gonna hang out in this black pot for now, I guess. Some of my pots are still downstairs. I need to go down there and finish unpacking them and everything. So maybe there'll be a cover pot down there for him. We're gonna be moving on to the Discoria Discolor. Uh, back to the garden. So I had plans to kind of do what I did last year, like something similar to that with a container garden, growing, you know, tomatoes and kale and potatoes and a bunch of herbs and everything and i was going to try out a couple of new things i'm obviously getting a late start with it being june already but i figured i would do my container garden kind of thing again because even though we have a backyard i just don't want to put the stress on myself of like you know getting the whole backyard gardening going yet there are some raised beds here already but i need to kind of like clear them out and it's going to take a lot of planning and time and money to get the backyard garden going so i think that i'm going to take this winter to really put some thought in it decide what i want to do do a lot of research and then for next gardening season i'll start actually gardening in the yard um so that was kind of my plan 
But then when we moved here, we quickly discovered like literally the first morning I woke up and I saw a deer outside the window. There are a lot of deer here, a lot of wildlife here. We do not have any type of fence around the yard or around the garden patch or anything. So I had brought a couple of tomatoes over and strawberries and they were eaten like that. <laughs> like they're just destroyed. So then we're like, okay, um, I don't even think I can do my container garden except for what I can fit on our small covered deck just around the perimeter where the sun hits is basically my only growing space right now for veggies. So right now my plan for an outdoor garden is basically what I've already done, which is I have two long planters of herbs. I have another planter with basil. I have strawberries um, and two things of kale. And I think that's all I have going. Oh, I also did plant seeds for some patio snacker cucumbers, but I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to find space for them where they're, where they're gonna be able to get sun. So I've kind of had to recalculate my plans a little bit for the garden. I'm just trying to make it work with what I have until we can either put like a deer fence around the garden or yeah, that's probably gonna be our first option that we end up going with because I do really, really, really want the backyard fenced, but it's very expensive to have a fence built. So I don't know how soon we're gonna be able to do that. Um, it's definitely going to be happening eventually, I hope, but there's other things we need to take care of uh, to like do some repairs and things in the house first. So yeah, that's kind of the lowdown on that for now. I'm really still really excited about growing my herbs and everything and it just makes the deck feel cozier too. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I only planted them a week ago, so it's still, they're still like small and fresh out there. Next question is what conditions are you keeping your philodendron serpents in? I just got it and I don't want to kill it. I feel like I'm not the best person to ask about philodendron serpents. This is mine. It's actually right here because I'm trying to get the leaves to face out. I had it on the windowsill like this and it's reaching back towards where the light was. So I'm trying to get it to straighten out. But I have this one that I've potted and put on a pole. And then I also have a bunch of cuttings that are rooting in water right now. They're probably rooted. I just need to pot them up. Um, but I just, I don't know. Philodendron serpents is a bit of a tricky one in my experience. At first I thought they needed really high humidity, but mine wasn't really doing too much in the Ikea greenhouse cabinet. So I ended up taking it out and just growing it in my bedroom in ambient humidity and kind of like medium lighting, like kind of ambient light from grow lights on either side type of thing and um it did really well there until i just kind of neglected it and it wasn't doing great and i decided to chop it um so i'm still it's a plant that's still kind of a work in progress for me and i'm trying to figure out so i'll update once i have it figured out a little bit more but somebody who has a really amazing philodendron serpents is her plant stories on instagram hers is so lush and beautiful and i'm pretty sure that she i don't know if she is currently but she for a while was growing it in um, ambient humidity and it was doing really well and looking amazing so I don't think humidity is as big of a thing as it was made out to be, or at least from what I heard with philodendron serpents, because yeah, mine hasn't suffered any humidity damage that I've noticed and hers has, has always looked amazing. So I don't know. Anyways, maybe go check out her page if, um, if you're looking for advice on that one. What is your favorite thing to do in the Pacific Northwest? I am new to the area. That's so nice. Welcome. Some of my favorite outdoorsy things to do here are definitely like hiking and camping, um, just going on different walks. I feel like that's not a super original answer, but I don't know exactly where you are. And the best thing about living here is definitely just being able to enjoy the beauty and the nature. Also, it's kind of the perfect place to live if you just like inside kind of cozy things like curling up with a book or even having a nice day out when it's raining like going in getting a coffee checking out some bookstores it really kind of sets the ambiance for that so yeah i do appreciate as much as i complain about like how dark and gloomy it is in the winter i do appreciate the cozy vibes when i'm able to just like you know do something cozy so yeah 
Okay, so somebody asked, any info on soil mites? I see them in my soil every now and then and find it hard to differentiate between beneficial and harmful pests. What's been your experience with them? So I have soil mites too. I see them in my soil. They just kind of like are skittering around in there and um, they don't hurt your plants. So I just kind of, they just chill there. I just kind of ignore them. Um, the only time that I have been kind of confused by them is when they're in my perlite prop box and I can see them crawling around and I'm kind of like, is that a soil mite or what is that? But I think most of the times it's a soil mite, especially if in a prop box there's high humidity and they like that. But anyways, I thought I would share Holly's answer because she answered this question. Thank you so much. I really appreciate when, if you have an answer to someone's question, like you're scrolling through comments and you see a question and you have the answer, please share your, your knowledge because it helps us all out. And I love like hearing your guys' opinions and your knowledge as well. So. Um, Holly says, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but more of a generalization. Good bugs are fast. Other harmful pests tend to be slower. Also, again, not a rule, but a generality. Harmful bugs live on and eat your plants, not the soil. That's a really great answer. And I also keep that in mind as well when I'm seeing bugs on my plants, that the good bugs are typically moving quickly and slow bugs are usually just kind of like moseying because they're munching on your plant and everything. So yeah, thank you so much, Holly. Okay, next question. Is finishing sentences as questions part of your accent? I'm learning about US accents. First of all, I'm Canadian. And second of all, I get this comment as a hate comment. I don't think that this one was meant as a hate comment. I think it's just like a genuine question, but I get this comment as a hate comment um, kind of frequently. Like I've definitely had it more than a handful of times. And sometimes people are very aggressive about it and they're like, I can't even watch this video because of the up speak or whatever the heck it's called. When you kind of tend to go up and pitch at the end of your sentences and it sounds like you're asking a question. To me, when I hear myself talk, it doesn't sound like that because I'm just used to the way I talk and I don't know. If people can't stand it, then fine, but this is just the way that I talk and the way that I've always talked and I genuinely don't think that I can change it, so I'm sorry. Um, it's actually really interesting. I find linguistics fascinating. There's actually a lot of articles and research and things published about upspeak or that, you know, tend to kind of rise at the end of sentences. It's interesting because it's really tied into like misogyny and the patriarchy because it's typically women who are really bashed and berated for having the linguistic tendency to have that rise at the end of their sentences. There's a lot of things written about like how society has impacted women to speak in certain ways. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting. Maybe I'll link some articles down in the description box if you're interested in reading more about it. There's also a book that I have really been wanting to read um, called Word Slut, which is kind of about, again, linguistics. And it talks kind of about a similar thing. It might even talk about Upspeak in the book. I haven't read it yet, but I know it talks about, um, you know, just the way women speak and even using the word like and things like that and just like the misconceptions and the research around that type of stuff. So yeah, I really want to read that book. I actually should reserve it at the library like right now while I remember. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to leave soon. <gasps> I have to leave soon. I'm getting too caught up. Oh, it's not on Libby. Shoot. Maybe I'll have to buy it. Maybe I should get some of this perlite off. What am I doing? I'm so distracted. Anyways, long story short, I, I don't know what to tell ya. People who comment about the way that I talk. I was gonna say sorry if you don't like it, but honestly, I'm not sorry. And it's funny because after receiving hate comments saying those types of things, I kind of, it sucks because it makes me more aware of it and I've even tried to change it, but then it just, it just impedes my communication. Like it's not, it's not, I can't be policing the way that I'm talking or else I'm just not going to be, I'm not going to be expressing myself the way that I, that I am or that I'm trying to, you know? So I just try not to think about it now, but out of all of the comments that I get, those are probably the ones that have stuck with me the most and bother me the most, <laughs> even though I try not to let them. Do you still have any self-watering pots? Um, we just did this one, of course, and I do have a couple others. My, I have a begonia in one, and I have a my Florida ghost in one. Yeah, there's a few. I don't have many though. I just kind of have a few now. 
I think that they're great though, honestly, especially for Pawn. And then they say, are you still keeping off of coffee, tea only? And the answer to that is no. I am back to being a coffee girly. Just, I kind of went back to it, just all the stress with like the house and everything during that process. I just, I don't know. I just went back to my old vice, you know? But I do, I, I was off of coffee for over six months and I do feel really good about that and feel confident that I don't need coffee. I could quit it again if I wanted to. I'm just kind of enjoying drinking it right now. And um, yeah, that's just kind of, that's just kind of how I'm feeling at the minute. But I still am drinking a lot of tea. Like I'm not drinking as much coffee as I was drinking. I was drinking like four or more cups a day before. And now I don't have more than two cups a day. And I also just enjoy drinking like green tea and black tea and herbal teas. So that's the tea on that. Okay, I'm gonna start filling this up. I didn't even show you the roots, but they look really good. They're fine, but they look really healthy. They're really white. There's not like a single dead root on here. They look amazing. So I'm gonna pop those in and I'm gonna use my own soil mix for this because I don't know if it would be happy in something so chunky. I don't know. So I'm just gonna stick with my regular mix. Okay, so the next question is, would love for you to review the towel method you spoke about. Um, I have a heart, I have a bird of paradise, both white and orange, but one giant leaf has not unfurled in months. So your leaf it is probably unfurled by now because I'm so late in answering these questions. But if y'all are not familiar with the towel method that they're referring to, I posted a video, it was honestly years ago now, like three years ago probably, of, um, Somebody had messaged me and told me to put a damp towel around my bird of paradise leaf, which had been furled for so long and I really wanted it to unfurl. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I decided to film it. Just, I wasn't expecting anything to happen. Like I remember being really skeptical, but I was like, I'll just film it anyways. And then it actually like immediately started unfurling and I was so shocked. It just, it worked so well, it was crazy. That video ended up getting like 4 million views on TikTok or something, which is kind of wild. That's definitely my most viewed video. But um, yeah, I, I don't really use that hack a lot, to be honest with you, because I don't really have any really large leaves like that that get stuck. I don't have a bird of paradise anymore, but um, it worked great. So I definitely recommend it if you do have stuck leaves, especially for larger plants like that. All I did was just take a regular kitchen tea towel, like a dish towel, um, soak it in like warm water, not super hot, but not cold either. And then I just wrapped it around the furled leaf and just held it there for, I don't know, like 20, 30 seconds. And then I removed it. And that like really concentrated boost of humidity and moisture was enough to make the leaf unfurl. And it was quite magical. So <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all have big stuck leaves, maybe try it out. I've seen a lot of people share that hack since then. Not that I was like the first person that shared that, but, but I did post that video a few years ago now. Okay, next question is, have you noticed any difference from using Sacred Elements tonics? How often do you use them? So this, I use the Sacred Elements leaf tonic and I also have the soil tonic. I don't use that as much as I should. I reach for the leaf tonic a lot but um, the soil tonic, I need to use some more. I really do need to use it more because I genuinely do feel like it really boosts my plants when I water with it. I've had plants that aren't growing at all and then I water with the Sacred Elements soil tonic and they magically start growing. So I've had really good experiences when I've used it. I just, I don't really think of it. When I'm going around and doing, mixing everything up, I like mix my fertilizer and everything and I just don't often think to do a watering with the soil tonic but when i have used it i've had really good results and the um these pieces of big piece of bark i'm just gonna leave out i think and the as for the leaf tonic i use that one quite frequently to both prevent pests and also to treat spider mites is what i've used it on specifically and it works so well for spider mites like surprisingly well in my experience i've just i've had really great luck with it and it's funny because I was kind of skeptical before and at first I was just kind of using it as a preventative for pests because I didn't think it'd be like powerful enough to actually get rid of a spider mite infestation. But since then I've definitely started using it on active spider mite outbreaks and it gets rid of them like very quickly. 
it's funny because I find that sometimes we have this perception, or at least I do, of when something is like natural, like a natural remedy or treatment, we expect it to not work as well as something more harsh, like a chemical treatment. So I kind of had that in my brain, but I've just been, I've been surprised at how well it works. So that's pretty much solely what I've been using for spider mites lately. I do have some spider mite gray coats right now, so I've just been using that. And I just spray them, I don't know, probably once a week with that, or like every time I water, I'll give a spray with that. Just make sure you do it at night because it does contain neem oil. It contains a lot of other stuff as well, which makes it smell good, which is nice because it kind of masks the neem oil scent. You can still smell it a little, but it also has this kind of like, I don't know, just this pleasant, sweet scent other than that, which makes it a really nice experience to spray it as well. Okay, so this one is planted up in the yogurt container. Did I answer the question properly? Have you noticed any difference from using sacred elements? Yeah, so basically, yeah, I love them. I've had a really great experience with their products. And it's been really nice to just use something that's natural and, you know, non-toxic and everything. Okay, so this is the trellis that I'm going to be using for this guy. It's a clear arch trellis from North Shore Tropicals. I think these are new. Um, she's stocking these now and she's also, there's different sizes as well. I have a smaller one and she's also stocking just straight kind of posts, which I think is going to be really great for reinforcing moss poles and things like that. So I'm really excited to try these out. I love the look of clear trellises. I'm just going to stick it down. Yeah, this is gonna be perfect. And then, which way should I go? Maybe this way. I'm just going to kind of wind him around and he'll, he'll find his way because this plant is just like crazy and wants to cling on to everything. And then eventually the leaves will turn out towards the light too. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. It is so cute. I'm so, okay, let's put the pot on too. Oh my goodness. Oh, this looks so much better. This literally looks so much better. I'll have to show you um, like a photo or a different video clip or something so that you can see better. Oh my goodness. This is just so cute. I love the pink vibes. Really hard to get it all in the frame, but yeah. Adorable. The clear trellis looks so good too. Super, super happy with that. I'll have to water that through as well. What else did we pot? The Hoya, I'll have to water that through too. Okay, I'll answer one more question. What type of moss poles are you enjoying the most slash is the easiest to use and how are you finding your new soil mix? I'm actually finding the new soil mix to work really well. I feel like my plants are really happy in it. It gives me just a little bit more time between waterings and I feel like I really need just that like little bit of extra moisture retention just because I know my watering habits. And now, especially that I'm living somewhere that's a lot brighter and a lot warmer, I just, yeah, I need, I need all the help to just re retain a little bit more moisture that I can get. And then what type of moss poles are you enjoying the most slash is the easiest to use? And that answer is definitely the closed back moss poles. They are so much easier and more sturdy than my DIY moss poles. I either, I'm either gonna go 100% just closed back moss poles or if I have a really big plant that I want to be on like a DIY moss pole, I need to find the wire mesh because the plastic mesh is not cutting it. I just had a fall with my philodendron splendid yesterday and I was so annoyed by it because it tore the new leaf. And yeah, that's just, it drives me crazy. And it's because after I water it, the pole is so heavy that it literally will just like bend at the joints. Like the plastic will just bend. And that's what happened like twice yesterday. It just kind of gives out because there's so much weight and it's just like a plastic. So yeah not a fan of the plastic mesh poles anymore i definitely if i'm gonna do that style of moss pole again i will be doing it with the wire mesh and not the plastic i just don't see the wire mesh anywhere if you're in canada let me know where you get it if you've made those kind of moss poles because i was looking the other day at home depot couldn't see it but for now i'm definitely just really into the closed back moss poles both the thickly and the rousseau ones i love 
I'm really excited to use more of the Rousseau poles because like I said, I love how they unbuckle at the front and they're just like a little bit thicker as well. I'm really curious to extend those ones because I've extended a lot of my thickly ones and they're surprisingly sturdy. Like my Philodendron Majestic looks amazing. It has three um, poles combined, three of the thickly poles combined and it's standing like perfectly straight and it just looks beautiful. So I know that the thickly ones extend nicely, but I'm really curious to try the Rousseau ones as well because they're bigger. So I think it might be even sturdier, which is exciting. So yeah, those are basically my favorites right now, the thickly and the Rousseau. I do also have a discount code if you've been wanting to try the Rousseau plant care poles or I think anything else on his website. He has also the Anthurium pot extenders, which I really wanna try also, but you can get 15% off of the grow poles with the code. It's either wild fern or wild fern 15. I'll have it on the screen and I'll have it linked down below in the description box if you're interested. But um, yeah, I'm really feeling the closed back moss poles and they also stay moist longer, which is just amazing. <laughs> I gotta run, you guys, I gotta run. I'm gonna water these plants and then I have to leave. I have to drive somebody somewhere right now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has left comments and also a massive, massive thank you to all of the kind comments that you've left on my most recent video. I'm still, I'm so behind on like catching up on everything still. I have to catch up on your comments, but from the ones that I've seen, you guys are just overwhelming me with love and kindness and I appreciate all of your congratulations. So just thank you. It really means so much to me. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you. I love you so much. What should be the emoji for this video? Leave me a blue heart down below in the comments if you've watched to the end. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.